Hello, uh, we're gonna see today how to um, define what in Spain is called like a danger zone uh, for uh, yeah, flood uh, water analysis. And we are gonna do this from um, a flood map uh, from a return period of 100 years that I have here. And what we're going to do is uh, from, from these uh, raster layers is to create a polygon that contains the areas where either what that has one of these three uh, conditions one either the depth is over one meter the velocity is over one meter per second or the product of uh, depth uh, times the velocity it's over uh, 0 0.5 uh, 0 0.5 uh, so we could see this uh, visually here in Hegras. Uh, if we like this by display discrete values, uh, we can see here we have like a small ponds where the water is over one meter, and the same with the velocity. We could yes discretize the value, and then we can see here velocity is over one meter per second. But how we are gonna do this today, it's uh, with QGIS, automating the process. I'm just gonna close the ones I used before. Well, we are gonna just bring this, uh, bring these raster layers here to QGIS. So we can see here this like uh, depth map and the velocity map. And then we are gonna create this tool uh, so from these two inputs, we obtain finally this like uh, danger zone. So uh, let's let's get started. We can just save this and close it. We can just uh, well we can leave it here to check later. And uh, we are gonna do it from the from QGIS. We go first to processing graphical modeler. And this is the interface where we are going to do our inputs and the tools. So first thing we need is go to inputs and select raster layer. So we are going to have like a depth for um, T100 and the same for the velocity T100. Okay. And from this we are going to do first a reclass, so from this raster layer that has values from 0 to, to 3 meters, for example, I want all the values that are over 1 uh, to be reclassified just to 1. So if it is 1, it will be reclassified to 1. If it is 1.5, it will be reclassified to 1. If it is 1.7, it will be reclassified to 1. So um, we go to algorithms and use reclass. Reclass by table. And we are going to call it a depth reclass. And we are going to use the input depth T100. And here, to the classification table, is where we set our uh, conditions. Uh, so we uh, go here to add pro. And the minimum will be 1. The maximum I will set just 1,000. Because anyway, it's the depth is gonna, not going to be over 1,000. So just set a very big value. And the new value that it will uh, give to this cell will be 1. We click OK. And now it's important to go to Show Advanced Parameters. And here, where it says Use No Data When No Range Matches Value, we click Yes. This way, the values that are between 0 and 1 will get the No Data value. So they are eliminated from our layer. And we click OK. And we do the same thing for velocity. So I'm just repeating the process. Velocity, uh, reclass, this is just the name. The input in this case is going to be the velocity. The classification table, we add row. We set the minimum to 1, maximum to 1,000. The new value, 1, OK. Show advanced parameter. Use no data when no range matches value. Yes. And OK. And now we go for the product. We have to do this multiplication between the depth and the velocity. And for that, I'm going to just use raster calculator. I'm going to use the one from GDAL. And the input layer A is going to be the depth. The input layer B is going to be the velocity. For both of them, we set the band to 1. 
because we anyway we just have one man and we just have to put this as an input if not QGIS will display an error and then we go down to our uh, calculated GD numeric system so here is where we set the syntax for the for the this multiplication so we just go a times b so it multiplies the layer a times layer b and then we said okay here we have our product and we do the same thing as for the depth and the velocity we go for the reclass reclass by table and we do the reclass product reclass uh, and in this case, the raster layer that I'm going to use is not a model input, it's an algorithm output because it's a layer that I've generated within my tool. It's not an input that I'm going to give later on, it's something that it's generating within the tool. So it's important to change this here. So the raster calculator layer is displayed. And then the same thing, reclassification table, we go to the three dots. We add a row, in this case the minimum is 0 0.5, maximum 1000, reclassify to 1, OK, show advanced parameter, use no data when no range matches value, yes, OK, perfect. This way I have three rasters, one from the depth, one for the product, and one for the velocity, over 1, over 0 0.5, over 1. Those are rasters, I'm going to transform them to, to polygons, for, so for that I'm going to use the Poly go nice tool from GDAL. And okay, I'm gonna go first for the depth as a polygon. And I think that's it. Depth polygon, use model input. No, I want to use algorithm output and I'm gonna use the depth that I have reclassed and I click OK. Perfect. And I do the same thing for uh, the product product as well. Yes, this is just the, uh, the name of the layer and I'm going to use the algorithm output. I'm going to use the product reclass and I click OK. And then again, polygonize this time for the velocity polygon. We use the algorithm output, which is the velocity reclass and OK. So this way I have three vector layers, three polygons for each of these conditions and I'm going to merge them. So I look for the tool merge, merge vector layers, I'm going to just call it merge. I go to the three dots and I select the three layers that I have created, click OK and that's it. And then one last um, step is we're going to use the tool dissolve so all these polygons are merged in the same attribute to simplify the, this geometry. So I will use dissolve, double click, and I'm just going to call it steep, zona intensa yeah, that's in Spanish, but uh, I could just give it the name of danger zone or whatever. And um, I'm going to put just the algorithm output and I'm going to use the merge that I uh, created. And in this case, here you can see in the, in the green arrow, it says enter a name if this is the final result. In this green layer, if I give it a name, it will give me, uh, it will display later the result in the QGIS interface. So I'm just going to call it danger song. And I think that's it, okay. And it shows up here, and this one disappears a bit, but we bring it back. And uh, I'm gonna save my tool, model, uh, save model as, model work, I'm gonna call it version three, and save. Okay, so let's see if it worked. We open the tool from the browser, double click. So it asks for the inputs that I set here as the names. And I'm going to input in this case the depth for 100 return period and the velocity. And now I run the tool. And let's see if that worked. Uh, if something doesn't work, especially at the beginning when you are trying it out, 
What I do is to check the intermediate results. And one way to do this is that here, when, when you are doing the, the tools, you can give it also a name here in each of the steps. So while it is calculating, it, is, it also displays the intermediate results, and I can check if those are uh, giving uh, correct results or not, or you know, so to keep track how far are my uh, computations uh, being okay or not. But in this case, I just leave it like this. Uh, Hercules keeps computing, but I don't think it will just will be just in a second. Algorithm finish, we close, and we can see that the danger zone has been completed. And it's exactly the same as before. But of course, I also recommend that we, we check, okay, is, uh, shall be this, uh, this rust uh, it should be within or should be outside. So in this case, for example, I can see the velocity is over one meter per second. So it's correct that it's inside the layer. But we can see that this one that is outside, okay, here the velocity is below one. So we can check uh, this uh, in a visual way if uh, we, we manage. And yeah, that's, that's it. I, ha I hope it helps. Just to show, uh, we can do exactly the same process in our map, in model builder, uh, and just the same tools, uh, just a different interface and uh, maybe a different syntax, but it's just the same process. And um, that's it. I, I hope it, it helps and I find model designer very really useful to add to my process. And if uh, you have any questions, just write it down there and I'll try to help. And okay, bye bye. <laughs>